we are in more dangerous times, no question about that. Go back a decade when we were discussing European neighborhood policy, mm -hmm. Mediterranean Initiative and Eastern Partnership and whatever. Um, we talk about the ambition to create what we call a ring of friends around Europe. Integration and a ring of friends, democratic rule of the law. Well, now we find in ourselves in a situation, we don't have a ring of friends, we have a ring of fire around Europe. If you look to the east, if you look to the south, it's fire. And the conclusion of that is that what we do as Europeans together is got to be far more relevant. The unity and cohesion of the European Union in foreign and security affairs is more important to have than ever in order to prevent the fire from spreading further than it has already done. I mean, let's be clear. Our construction of the European Union is about overcoming, overcoming bloodshed, periodical, even almost, uh, almost uh, every generation there was a big bloodshed in, in Europe. And we overcame this by being a bit, or, or consciously being amnesiac. This is another issue to be on the couch. But it's, we don't speak about history because our history is too controversial. So we looked into the future and we built this phenomenal project, which, I mean, it's, it's the project of several generations and I hope that it will go forward. But the truth of the matter is that the rest of the world is entrenched in history. And when you listen to Putin, he always makes references that go from World War II and beyond to the, to the, the Tsarist. And when you listen to Erdogan, he refers to the sultans much more than what he refers to the negotiation in the European Union. So I think that we have to be aware of that and we have to cope. And it's not easy, as, as always, we are in a, in a challenging position. Uh, we should be open to some of the problems that are happening to the EU. See how the discussion changed. Three years ago, the question was, who is coming? Now the question is, who is leaving? Is UK? or probably Hungary should be expelled, or who is getting uh, out of the Eurozone. So this is an important change, because this, what people are debating, all things are happening in the minds of the people. This is where basically the revolution happens, dissolution happens, and so on. So I do believe for Europe, we have a narrative that is very much telling the story of what's going to happen tomorrow is really of critical security importance. I do believe for Mr. Putin, it was a surprise to realize how weak his economy is. I, I really see, looking from the outside, that European Union is on the brinkmanship of profound change, maybe the biggest change uh, since the uh, uh, end of the Cold War. And that will be a different European Union, maybe a smaller one, with a completely different balance of forces inside, with a completely different new role of Germany, which is unclear yet what, what kind of role. And this European Union will confront different Russia. Russia, which is, as I uh, indicated before, in the process of trying to find a new identity, trying to identify itself, to understand who we are. Uh, we, we, we didn't do it before. And Ukraine, which is uh, now as mismanaged as it was before. Now it's a new revolutionary government, but. Uh, uh, sorry to say, it's uh, not, not uh, more efficient than the previous corrupted dict dictatorial. And in this situation, yes, we are facing, uh, towards, uh, we are facing very, very big trouble the uh, year 2015. But just these three remarks to put things in perspective. Paris is not unique. It could happen anywhere. We have prevented quite a number of different things. Our open societies have always been under threat and always will be must always be defended. And the worst that we see at the moment is not in Europe, it's elsewhere.